in today's episode of Pilates Elephants, we're going to talk about the Pilates police, who they are, why they do it, and most importantly, what you can do as someone who's either a recipient or an onlooker uh, to respond or not respond <laughs> or avoid or you know take the moral high ground uh, to basically feel good about the interaction and not have this be a blight on your life or someone else's life. So um, what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to talk about um, oh, a topic that I feel and, and a conversation that comes up all the time, time and time again, time and time and time again. And it's almost, it almost loops back in, I think, to our very first ever episode um, a little bit. I think that that, that vibe. Uh, the Pilates Police. Have you got a siren sound on there? Don't have a siren. Um, <laughs> got a sad trombone. Woo, 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 yeah, woo. No, don't, don't have anything appropriate, <laughs> I'm sorry. The Pilates Police. Yeah. Pilates Police. And I think, yeah, I think, I guess the elephant really is that there is a correct way to do things and there's a correct way to do Pilates and Pilates is only one specific thing and if you're not doing that, you're not doing Pilates and if you're not cueing it a certain way or you're not um, conforming to a certain set of protocols. Mm. Yeah. I, I think I think that's an elephant. I think uh, to me the bigger, more important elephant mm-hmm. is – that I think in any in any group, in any social group, there are always just a couple of knuckleheads, you know, who think that it's their job to make everyone else's life hell and tell everyone, you know, what's what. And and I think, you know, Pilates is no exception. You know, like if if it was engineering or you know, I'm sure there's there are people in any group that are the like the low, you know, the lowest common denominator that just take delight in tearing people apart. Yes, so I think there is that, there is that overt Pilates police, but I think there is also less overt as well. I think there is a subtle undertone also, and I see it coming through in in people that aren't necessarily the the bully. So I think Mm -hmm. I think I'd love to talk about the overt and the nuance of it, Mm. because I think I think it's a I think it's. Yeah, I think it's a more nuance than it's just the jerks. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the 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 problem is that the jerks are really vocal and really self assured, yes. and and then the people who are kind of watching silently on the side and don't necessarily agree with with the jerks with the jerks sort of feel like oh, I don't want to speak up here because then I'll get attacked, or maybe I'm the only one that doesn't agree with this. Mm. Maybe everyone else does agree with this and the fact that I don't agree with this makes me a weirdo and so because even though probably I reckon the vast majority of people don't agree with with crappy behavior like that Mm. oftentimes no one says anything you know because everyone thinks oh someone else will say it or whatever you know and I think that maybe that's where the nuance comes in yeah I mean I've seen it seen it kind of flipped around as well to for instance, a cohort like us, in the sense that we're we're shining a light on antiquated, antiquated belief systems around movement, etc., and that can be seen as, hey, but everyone, there's enough room at the table for everyone, and everyone should be able to do their thing, and we should just focus on our thing, and not shine the light. Because, so I've seen it, I've seen mm. it flip that and I've, you know, the science cult. Yeah, I've heard us referred to as that. That science cult, which I think is quite an unusual science cult. Okay. But yeah, so I think, I think this is quite a, mm. quite a, um, yeah. All right. So what are we, uh, you know, what are we, what are we, what are we going to talk through today? Basically, there's a, there's a group of people you know, I think they're a pretty small group. You're saying there's kind of some sort of semi-passive people on the sidelines of that that are on the fringes of that who are, you know, sort of complicit in it. 
um, who are, you know, basically take it upon themselves to tell other people how to do their thing. Oh, you're doing your teaser wrong. Oh, yes. You know, whatever. <laughs> you yeah, know? you're... you're your butt's not quite fo- – no, now it's too far forward, a little bit back. No, that uh, – uh, uh, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so – all right, so I think, you know, what I'm hoping to get out of this dis- discussion or what I'm hoping people listening to this will take away is like, okay, well, why do people do that, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and and more importantly, you know, what can you – as somebody on the internet, maybe maybe someone who's being kind of form shamed or whatever, or maybe someone who's just watching someone else mm. have that experience. You know, what can you do to you know to deal with that? Mm. And I would also love to add in some uh, discussion around this concept that that we shouldn't shouldn't actually be encouraging the entire industry to critically appraise what they're doing oh, yeah. because that's shaming Yeah. because, yeah, we should just be minding our own business and focusing on our things. So I'd like to – I think we should mm. talk about that as well. Okay. The well, science cult. Yeah. Let's let's deal with that first if that's all right science with you. Science cult, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love to. Yeah. So I think um, the – I imagine the people who would level that charge of science cult, you know, oh, you guys are telling people what to do, you're no different from the, the Pilates police, you're the science police. The um, the, 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 I imagine what those people would say is like, well, you know, you're just telling people that they're wrong and you're right, mm. you know, so how's that different? Right. Um, and I think, well, fundamentally at that level it's no different, but the thing is, you know, our conversations are based on, like, we're making claims about how the world works. You know, we're saying if you do it this way, it works better. If you don't do it this way, it doesn't work as well. You know, queuing or whatever it might be. And those are what's called empirical claims. They're claims about reality, mm. you know, th- which means that they're testable, they're measurable, you know. So if we say if we put a bowling ball at the top of a hill, it's going to roll downhill. Well, that you can actually test that. You know, yeah. you can put a bowling ball at the top of the hill and see if it rolls down. You know, <laughs> like it either will or it won't, yeah. right? And so there is an objective, actual, factual truth, you know, behind that. Now, who's right or wrong? It's not a matter of like, oh, some people believe bowling balls roll downhill and some people don't and everyone's got a right to their opinion. Well, everyone's got a right to their opinion, but it doesn't make them correct, mm. right? So, you know, bowling balls do roll down actual hills, you know, and if you test it a thousand times, it's going to happen a thousand times, mm. right? So there is an actual, objectively verifiable truth. You know, in other words, it's a, it's an empirical question, mm-hmm. right? So if we say something along the lines of, you know, queuing transversus abdominis doesn't improve outcomes like at pain or disability for people with low back pain, right? Well, that's an empirical claim, right? And you can test it. And it has been tested mm. many, many, many times. And it's been found to be the case that that is a true claim. That is, in fact, how the world works, right? It's a fact. Uh, whereas your teaser is wrong, right, is not an empirical claim. Uh-huh. It's like saying, you know, tomato is the best vegetable. Well, actually, tomato is the best fruit would be a, <laughs> a better, better claim, right? Well. It's easy to figure a- that according to who, right? <laughs> That's a, just a subjective matter. You yeah. might like tomatoes. I might like bananas, yeah. right? Who? Yeah. You know, how can you measure that? It's not an empirical claim. It's a, it's a subjective personal taste mm-hmm. question, right? So me saying to you, your teaser's all wrong. Well, where? How do you measure that? Mm. You know, it's mm. got to be in the court of public opinion, right? So, mm. how, how do you how do you measure if someone's teaser's wrong? Well, you you ask someone and so then it just becomes a matter of subjective opinion it's not a matter of fact Mm. so that's the difference between us and the Pilates police I reckon gotcha yeah and um I've said it many many times Raf uh, that I truly believe working within the um health sphere we need to continually level up if we are going to work with people and we're going to, you know, tell them factoids or whatnot about, you know, how their body works, why they're experiencing pain, this, that or whatever, well, you, 
you need to know your you need to yep. know your stuff. Like that's actually part of what you've signed up to be if you're going to work with people, right? Um, and it doesn't mean you need to know everything. In fact, you're better off confidently expressing uncertainty than, <laughs> you know, making something up or saying something with certainty that is not backed by current evidence or best practice. So the realm in which we work, we actually are beholden to bring best practice to our clients and constantly help level up that space uh, and elevate health literacy. And I come back to this time and time again with my students in particular, when we, particularly when we get to um, module four of our Cert 4, which is on working with clients with, with pain and injury in a, in a group setting, etc. that if the old ways of, you know, what am I thinking about? Form over, you know, function. And what, all of these things, like when I'm thinking about biomechanics, et cetera, et cetera, everything that was, was done and, and kind of still is being done more than what it should be, well, lower back pain wouldn't be the leading cause of disability worldwide. Like that, that's, to me, that's a heavy factoid. Lower back pain, leading cause of disability worldwide, right? So we haven't got it right in the past, or it wouldn't be so prevalent. Yeah. Okay, so we've got it. You've just got it. You've got to do the thing, guys. You've got it. Like, working in a health and exercise realm, you need to be an evidence-based practitioner. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, I, I, I feel pretty similarly. Um, I think, you know, when, when uh, you know, when, as, as a professional, I mean, we all have a legal obligation called duty of care which is in fact every human um, has a legal duty of care to every other human which and the duty of care is to prevent any reasonably foreseeable harm right so if i run down the street you know swinging a a, a, a going chainsaw right <laughs> and then i accidentally chop off someone's arm mm. i can't say oh, i didn't mean to it's mm. just an accident mm. because it's like well any idiot should be able to figure out that if you run down a crowded street swing your chainsaw you're going to hurt someone. You're going to hurt someone, right? Yeah. So that's a reasonably foreseeable harm, and I, I am legally liable for that, right? And so as a professional, we have a greater duty of care, right? Mm. So it, when you're teaching a Pilates class, every person in the room has a duty of care to everyone else in the room, mm. right? But the instructor has a greater duty of care because of their position as a leader in the room as, and because of their position as a professional in that setting where they're kind of giving instructions to people and the the other client, you know, the clients are kind of following their lead. So you're presumed as a professional to have a greater knowledge mm -hmm. and a greater access to information, and so you have a greater duty of care than just a, any old regular client in the in the class. And so your duty of care is to to prevent any reasonably foreseeable harm, right? And so, well, you know, then it, the legal question becomes what's reasonably foreseeable. And I would argue that well, if you're doing something that's that's not concordant with current accepted best practice you know that's the that to me that's a pretty clean definition of what's reasonably foreseeable harm right you should do the best give the best treatment that or best program that we know how so and i think there's an, an ethical responsibility there as well mm. you know like if 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 the average member of the public doesn't know anything or care anything about the research on transverse abdominis well why should they right? but i think as a pilates professional if you're referring to or making claims about transversus abdominis well it's it's an um, ethical obligation and i think a legal one as well probably for you to actually know what the fuck you're talking about yeah i couldn't agree more and that comes back to parrot cues stop with the parrot cues the parrot cues where we we say things and i hear instructors do it a lot um just because they think they should be saying it but i'm like okay well tell me tell me what you're trying to elicit from what you've like what are you asking your client to do um I, yeah so, so thinking about what we're what we're doing, mm. um, yeah, I couldn't agree more. All right. So, oh, one thing yeah. I do want to say on that though. One thing that I think is just it's so unique and fantastic for our students is that one of the ways. I mean, there's lots of ways we keep leveling up our grads. So when our grads, so what I think what I love about what we're doing is when our grads leave the nest, so to speak. You know, the, the 
they're still constantly got these touch points with us and they have continual access wherever to their to their coursework and and it's not just the coursework frozen in time where they when they left their course no they they constantly have access to the most updated so when we if we find something that is better you know newer best practice we update it they get the most updated information Mm. i think that's really incredible that we do that it's and very unique i wouldn't know any other organization that does can like like not not just talking pilates like anything have you ever heard of that no i've got it at my uni uh I get a, an alumni log into their um, online search portal, but um, you know, which is great. But I don't have access to any of my old lecture content, or or let alone the, what the current lecture content is mm. in that topic or anything like. Yeah, it's. I think it's quite unheard of. It's mm. incredible. Mm. Yay us! Yeah. Yay so, us! All right. Yay our grads. So so okay. um. So we've covered off. We've covered off the science cult. Tick. Yeah, because we're basically making factual claims about reality based on scientific evidence, not based on subjective opinion. And if you're making claims about someone's teaser, you're just making claims about subjective opinion. So that's not the same thing. And if you're making claims about something factual without knowing what the fuck you're talking about, well, that's really, I think, you know, ethically very problematic and possibly legally problematic. All right. So, what about just the? Um, I think, you know, let's let's turn our our spotlight now to the the back corner of the room that's in shadow. The where those faceless internet feels a little bit <laughs> Voldemort. A little bit. What are the um the the things that come? Mm, they start with a D. Dementors. Don't they? Yeah. Dementors. I just got a little help mm. from the sidelines mm. on that. Dementors. <laughs> I'm feeling like the Dementors are coming in. Um, and so these these are the folks yeah. who who they, you know it, I think it ranges a gamut from you know ostensibly friendly. Oh, you need to lift your foot a bit higher, or that's incorrect, or whatever. But it's 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 really a kind of a it still is a sort of a, a putting down of people, even though it's sort of couched in nice friendly you know, language. And it ranges a gamut from that to like, oh, no, you're fucked, you know, I can't believe you're a teacher, Um, you know, I hope you're not teaching your clients that or whatever, you know, like, uh, you know, would you agree with that? Yeah, and it goes even further. There's the, and I mean, I don't want to name the page because I don't want to give it that energy, Um, but I'm sure a lot of our listeners will know the page I'm talking about. Um, this particular instructor from the States um, goes as far as doing a, well, was, I don't know, I'm not following the page, so I'm not sure if they've stopped doing it, but doing a Wednesday segment where basically they were um, recreating a uh, sequence that they'd seen on another Pilates instructor's Instagram. So a creative sequence. Yeah, so they would go, they would troll it, they would get it, then they'd recreate it and they would call it, what the fuck? So sort of like an evil Celeste Barber. You know Celeste Barber. Yeah, I love her. Yeah, she's awesome. No, I don't want to. I don't want to bring her. No, I think she's so fantastic. I wouldn't want to put it. This this person was just really mean and petty. This is like her evil twin. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that analogy, Raph. I really love Celeste and I would hate to put her in any sort of bracket with this particular person. But anyway, so what they would do is they would troll They would troll a creative account um, and then they would replicate the movement basically with a WTF, what the fuck, and then they would show the contrology equivalent but i don't think this person is actually jp they seem to be a little bit more romana potentially i don't know but they would show the classical equivalent right of what they this person should be doing and then this person 
followers would all get on and be like, yeah, I saw that too. What the hell? Why would you even do that? That's so ridiculous. What are they doing with the box? What are they, who, you know, what, like full blown shame, shame, shame. It reminds so, me of a Monty Python to like, burner, burner, burner. God, burner. I'm down. Yeah. It's this day. <laughs> It is a bit Monty Python, <laughs> burn the witch at the stake kind of situation. It's like freaking hell just because someone wanted to get creative. So this actually got this hoo-ha over this got quite big. I, you know, I got involved. I got on and said, "What? this is cyberbullying. What are you doing? They just totally ignored me. Um, quite a few people got on, uh, some bigwigs in the industry. There were some DMs going around. You know, we need to get this shut down it's cyberbullying um i know i put in um requests to instagram to get it shut down for cyberbullying instagram just ignored it i mean this person has a t-shirt i think it's this person that says basically make pilates classic classical again say like, hello um really we're gonna bring the whole trumpism into this like is this shit's getting wacky so there's a real there is absolutely a real extreme nasty and what particularly upset well there was a lot that upset me about that a it's just abhorrent you know it is just abhorrent bullying yeah. behavior full stop it is absolutely cyberbullying yeah 100 percent. 100 percent cyberbullying right and there's no like it's just it's gross it's really gross and it says a lot about that human being that that's how they want it i mean do you know how long it takes to bloody set up a video and say like it was all it was all filmed quite well and etc like really that's how you want to spend your time you want to put that much energy into shaming others instead of going and maybe having you know creating great uh experiences for your clients or maybe educating yourself you know um but what a thing that quite saddened me about it was I saw some, I saw some big, some of the bigger, bigger accounts, some in the industry, some like getting on the bandwagon with it and actually supporting her, and that kind of shocked me that there was still, like, I was shocked by a few people actually that I had been following. Mm-hmm. And that were actually supporting that content. Mm-hmm. That's probably what shocked me the most because a lot of the time these these dementors <laughs> if we're going with I feel like we've got a bit of Harry Potter theme mm-hmm. happening today when we started with your birthday cake. Mm-hmm. Um, I f- you know they're not really in my realm. I don't hang I don't hang in that crew. I'm not hanging out with the you know the nasty peeps. Um, so I was really shocked to see some of some crew that I actually did have respect for mm. and respect for well, their work. And I was like, okay, whoa, unfollow, you know, mm. remove myself from that because I can't be in any way supporting supporting mm. this. Mm. So, you know, when we're talking about that, it's just really nasty, just plain old nasty stuff. And I think, you know, unfortunately there's a side of human nature like that isn't there. Mm. Can, can I share a little study I found about that? Oh, you've got a study? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about this. I was wondering, like, there must be some Did research on this. you type in Harry Potter systematic reviews? No, I typed in... Um, <laughs> to uh, mentors. To Google Scholar, I typed in all in title, colon, <laughs> quote, uh, internet trolls, close quote. Um, and I came up with a paper from uh, the Journal of Personality and Individual Differences in 2014 by uh, Erin Bucknells, oh, sorry, Buckles, um, and the title is Trolls Just Want to Have Fun. And um, so what... what uh, I'm really seeing now the, the troll dolls. What they did in this is they did two online studies with a total of uh, 1,215 participants and they questioned people and they sent them this five-word, a uh, five-item questionnaire um, and... Uh, let me see what was on it. Um, and so basically what they are, they asked these questions. I can't believe people said, you know, yes to these, answer these questions. But they, um, they asking, they asked survey participants what they, quote, enjoy doing most, close quote, when online, uh, comment on sites offering five options, quote, debating issues that are important to you, chatting with others, making new friends, trolling others and other. Right? And can you believe 
that 5.61% of people said yes to trolling others as what they enjoy most on, online. 5.61% yeah. out of 100%. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it, it's not a huge – like it's it's sad that anyone – that that's the thing they get joy in. Yeah. I was worried there you were going to go, it's like a 70% mark or something. No, but, that, but like, you know, trolling I think universally has a negative – connotation right it's like well, trolling's on like trolling's awful trolling right. trolling and, is bullying right and so for people to own up to it you know it's like if, if you asked everybody you know on the street i you know do you do you you know like internet porn right probably everyone's going to say no right but that's probably not the real reality <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so it's i think it's probably something similar with trolling right so if you say like hey Chloe, do you like trolling people online? You know, what are you going to no. say? Yeah, of course Bloody you're going to say no. Right? And I deeply right. mean it. <laughs> but so imagine what, imagine the psychology of someone goes, oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's right? really, it's really <laughs> whack. Um, and so what they, then they asked them a, a bunch of other uh, questions in this survey um, about their, essentially their personality traits, right? And, uh, you know, um, and so what they found was there was a correlation between, let me see, um, both studies revealed similar patterns of relations between trolling and the dark tetrad of personality. Trolling correlated positively with sadism, psychopathy and Machiavellianism, that's sort of like um, manipulating other people for your own ends, um, uh, using both enjoyment ratings and identity scores. Of all personality measures, sadism showed the most robust associations with trolling and importantly, the relationship was specific to trolling behaviour. Enjoyment of other online activities such as chatting and debating was unrelated to sadism. Thus, cyber trolling appears to be an internet manifestation of everyday sadism. End quote. Whoa. So these are the kids that used to pull the wings off flies. Whoa. Wow. And now they're just doing that on the internet. Wow. Wow, that's yeah. heavy so, and Yeah, because I was terrifying. wondering, like, why do people do that shit? You know, it's just like, what do they gain from it? And the answer is they get pleasure from inflicting pain on other people. Wow, I've got a really horrified look on my face right now, everyone, and I just want to talk about the cake and kittens <laughs> again. Because... <laughs> This is taking a really dark turn, and that I just—that's horrible. It's so horrible. Wow, and it's mm. that's heavy. Yeah, and so so, and so, so shaming shaming um, creative Pilates sequences is akin to pulling the wings off flies. That's what I reckon. Yeah, that's based on that research. Yeah. Oof. So, you know, and so all right. Wow. So shall we? Shall we? You know. Wow. Steer wow. towards steer towards the light at the end of the tunnel. Wow. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Please, before um, I have a little well, cry. All right, so I also looked up a bunch of stuff about like how to deal with trolls, and I didn't come up with any evidence based like oh these things work better than other things. But there was some there was some great um, opinion pieces I found, and basically the consensus is don't feed them, ignore them, right? Because if mm. and, and that kind of makes sense to me if yeah. you think somebody's doing this because they like inflicting pain, right? You let them you know can't, you're you can't in- argue with them. Like you're not going to convince them of anything. You know, the fact that you're getting angry at them makes them happy, right? So, so you, argue, you know, arguing with them is just like throwing gasoline on the fire, right? It's actually doing what they want. Um, so the general advice was, you know, ignore them, okay? Um, and if you do respond because they just, they won't be ignored, like they just keep going with mm. it, um, then when you respond, you're not responding to that person because they're unreachable. They're basically a psychopath, right? So the, you're responding to the silent onlookers who are sitting on the sidelines, not commenting but watching, right? Um, and so the, the two advices I found that was very consistent was, number one, correct them with facts. You know, if you have facts, correct them with facts and don't be angry because that, again, just fuels the fire. So basically you, you, you should take the moral high ground, you know, um, because again, not for the trolls because they're they're a write off, but for the silent folks watching on the sideline, thinking, ah, ah, is this okay behaviour? I'm not sure. You know, yeah. right? Um, and and I think the best example that I've ever seen of that was uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Have you heard of his Teachable Moment post? 
No, I huh? just watched she's got a pony that comes inside. Is it a pony or a is it a donkey? Yeah. <laughs> and they and they come into his house yeah, and they yeah, eat yeah. dinner with yeah. him and they that's all I'm yeah. going on to Arnie's page for. Yeah. 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 Um well the, I saw this on, on social media a couple of years back. I think it's from twenty seventeen. Um and basically there was the uh the 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 it was this I think it was a special Olympics the fake basically for people with dis- intellectual disabilities, uh-huh. um, and Arnold you know commented something you know posted something about the special Olympics and said oh these people inspire me, you know they're awesome, and then someone else commented on his post and said oh I don't know you know I'm paraphrasing but basically I you know I thought the Olympic was for like awesome people and these people are a bunch of embarrassments you know we shouldn't pay them any attention sort of thing, and Arnie. Arnie, I'm going to read you word for word what he said. Um, he commented back. He said, quote, you have two possible paths ahead. Right now, I guarantee you that these athletes have more courage, compassion, brains and skill, actually more of every positive human quality than you. So take their path. You could learn from them and try to challenge yourself to give back, to add something to the world. Can you hear Arnold's accent? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. (laughs) Or you can stay on your path and keep being a sad, pitiful, jealous internet troll who adds nothing to the world but mocks anyone who does out does out of a small minded jealousy. I know that all you really want is attention, so let me be clear. If you choose to keep going this way, no one will ever remember you. End quote. Wow. Um, and he started out, I think even before this, what I read out, he basically started out by saying, look, hey, I could block you right, and delete your post, but I'm not going to because I think this might be a teachable moment for you. Wow. Right. And then he said what I just read out. Wow. And so I think, you know, who, that person that made the comment, hopefully they were deeply ashamed and realised, you know, <laughs> how horrible, what, you know, what it was that they'd done. Hopefully, but, but it's pretty intense. They've right, said it in the first but place. But even, if, even if not, right – the people watching on the sidelines, I mean, you can't, I, I can't read those words without almost getting a tear in my eye, you know, <laughs> and and just thinking like, fuck yeah, you know, <laughs> what a horrible thing to say and how despicable and yeah, you should take this as an opportunity to, to learn and emulate those people who are trying to add something to the world rather than just tearing things apart. You know, anyone can knock down a stack of bricks, mm. like it's much harder to build a stack of bricks than it is to knock it down, mm. you know. So I think that I really love that quote from Arnie and I, um, I'm going to post that in the show notes and I think like I reckon you could do a lot worse. I mean, just Google it, right? Arnie, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, internet troll, teachable moment post or whatever, you'll find it pretty easily. Just like post that verbatim to your internet troll and say, hey, in the words That's of Arnold amazing. Schwarzenegger, bam, you know. That's amazing, Ralph. Well, what a great idea. Mm. I love that and Mm. I love everything you said and I love that, you know, when we're thinking about the the psychological profile basically of the person that gets pleasure from trolling, uh, it makes so much more sense to me now, the whole don't keep coming back at them, don't Mm. keep back and forward, the rep, you know, the... Exactly, but it's I've seen that happen time and time again, and I have been in that position before, um, but I don't. I tend not to now, uh, really, just to conserve my own energy and the fact that I'm actually an extremely busy person who's got a lot of really great things to do and really great positive things to put my energy into, and that is not it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it can be tough for for newer like like you know uh, every now and then someone will still not so much anymore but every now and then someone who's not in my community will stumble across my page and want to say something about one of my one of my um clients you know being in wrestlers bridge or being in head front or head back um basically for those who may not know those movements they're movements where you're kind of you know up on the crown of your head on the reformer doing various things yeah so you're loading your neck oh no (laughs) by the way that's fine yes neck abs they're good for you um Shout shout out in all of my book (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and they will stumble across stumble across my page and it'll be like oh 
loaded cervical flexion that's so dangerous rah, rah, rah. and I'm like okay and I will and I'll I'll start a conversation with them about well tell me why you think that and let me tell you and then it's there's just it's this the teachable moment does not seem to be there mm. and I'm just like okay well I'm not not going to enter into it mm. any further but I'm okay I'm not affected by that like mm. that's I don't have an emotional attachment to that I'm not rattled I'm not then sitting there thinking oh shit Maybe I am a bad teacher. Oh, my God. Maybe I'm going to hurt my clients next. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. I'm very confident in what I'm doing and what I know. Yeah. And so for me, it's not a big deal. However, where I do see it a big deal and perhaps for the um, for the listener who did ask us to discuss this question. Was this Shauna from... Uh, imbalance Pilates in Tucson. That's how they said. My my memory is that it was Shauna. Shout out to Shauna yeah, if it's Shauna. Shauna. <laughs> um, but yeah, I well well I don't know I don't know where Shauna's at in her in her teaching career or her journey or what she's come across. But what I do know is that I do see this affects new grads yeah. more, or you know, uh, instructor tr- you know people that are currently training to be an instructor etc and they get scared and we hear we know this because they say it i'm scared to put myself online i'm Mm. scared to put myself out there what if you know i'm going to get shamed for my form or my shape or my teaching Mm. i remember actually the first time i started putting up because for a long time basically it was just me doing exercise like i was kind of the subject of my Instagram because I only sort of had myself to work with you know etc etc and it wasn't until I became a teacher trainer where I was training people to be instructors that there was some real sort of clips of me actually teaching and I remember the first few times that went up I was a little bit oh like nervy in my gut for a really genuinely putting my work out there and B, how it was how was it going to be received? I, it w- I, so yeah, it was interesting. It that absolutely did cross my mind. Now I don't care, but it did. Mm. So I can see for the newer people, it's tougher. Mm. So how how can we support them through that? Mm. Like, have you what sort of tips do you think? Um, well, uh, I guess um, advice that I that I heed. Um, I heard this from a bunch of people, from Seth Godin to Tim Ferriss, is basically just don't read the comments, right? So when I write a blog post or put a thing on YouTube, or I mean, I've got like thousands of bits of content out of there on the internet, and, you know, pretty regularly I get an email going, oh, someone's commented on XYZ. I'm like, delete. I don't know if it's a good comment, bad comment, whatever. You know, I just don't read them. Um, because I've discovered that it brings me nothing but grief, right? Because there's going to be negative ones, mm. right? Fine. People can disagree, right? I'm not interested in hearing their opinion, though. So I just don't, I just don't read them. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 okay. But if it's on an ins- – like your Instagram, it's a bit hard not to read your Instagram comments. And there's also this algorithm within Instagram that – for an engagement purpose, I just block the person. Block. Just block. So something as soon as I read like the first three words, and I'm like, "Oh, this is not going to be pretty." Block. Don't even read the rest. Right. And that way, I don't angst about. Oh, any. I just like just block. Right. Delete. Yeah. Block. Delete. Yeah, that's called mental fucking health hygiene. No, well, I'm I mean, if, if someone walks into the room, you know, smoking a cigar and blowing smoke in my face, I get up and walk out. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Block to leave. Yeah. Damn. Like it's, it's, it's a quarter of a strike and you're out on my Instagram feed. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we call that cancelled? <laughs> No, it's no, and this is not about people expressing differing opinions, yeah, yeah. right? This is about people shaming, attacking, yeah. putting down, whatever. It's like, no, fuck you, I'm not interested. Yeah, no, I don't want to engage. Yeah, because because in the past, before I figured that out, 
I used to lie in bed at night, you know, with a freaking knot in my tummy. Mm. Going, if only I'd said this, you know. Yeah, I know, because that, that's the thing, isn't it, too? At that Any time I've engaged with any back and forward on social media, the thing that gets me the most is, oh, oh, I should have, damn, now I've thought of the thing I should yeah, have said. It's and true I in the morning when you it. wake up and go, and now oh, now like, I know what I knew. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, but I didn't say that. And uh, and that's, yeah, I totally agree. And it becomes about that more so than actually what the person said. <laughs> it's like... So yeah, it's just a, a complete um, complete waste of time, and I think really, and as as to so many of our topics on um, this podcast, there's this there's this beautiful intertwining kind of narrative through them all that ultimately you just got to be yourself as well. So you've got to hold true to your voice you know, put your stuff out there, keep, keep elevating yourself. And we've said that in the, in the episode that was on be yourself. Doesn't mean sit on your laurels. Doesn't mean go, okay, I know everything there is to know now. I don't need to do anything more. No, you've got to continually, continually grow. But it's okay to put your stuff like put your stuff out and mm. see the evolution of it. You know, one of my favorite, um, favorite uh, uh quotes and i don't think i've said this on the on the podcast yet and it's not from cage lion do a push up Woo! <laughs> <laughs> see they were waiting for it Jeez, i really i really strung them out on that one didn't i are you guys getting buff <laughs> do another one cage lion cage lion cage lion there we go there we go and we're talking full push-ups hey, i want to see if you can get we like could get them doing like three sets of ten <laughs> you know <laughs> Just so just say cage lion ten times, Woo! and then That's another one, guys. then just wait five minutes, and then say it ten times again, and oh. then wait five minutes and do it again. Bam. So basically, guys, that way you'll be listening to Pilates elephants, and you'll be getting in your your workout at the mm. same time. Mm. This is win win. Awesome. And we could scale the push ups up or down. Like if you can't do a full one, do it off your knees. If you can't do it off your knees, do it on the wall. Yeah. If you can do ten full ones, do it with your feet on the wall. Yeah, nice. Um, I quite like an incline push-up so that I can get as low as possible. So I think you tested me on that. I think we did it off the lounge, mm. hands mm. on the lounge. That's good for me. I was really sore after mm. that. Awesome. Yeah. So but anyway. You know, Chloe, just being sore doesn't tell you that the workout was effective. Oh, look, at mm. park, park doms for another episode. Um, before I lose my train of thought. Did you call me? I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Delete, block, <laughs> cancel. <laughs> Rasa, my friendship is over <laughs> on his birthday. It's all very dramatic. I can't believe uh, she co- came in and called me Doms on my birthday. <laughs> what does it stand for anyway? <laughs> Sorry, what's your name? Um, before I, I still haven't said the quote I want to say. Okay, but sorry. Before I say the quote I want to say, uh, big shout out to all of those that went out and bought Caged Lion this week because bless your yeah, little cotton up. socks, do a push up. You've all been tagging me in it in Instagram. So thank you. Please keep tagging me in your um, cage line purchases. I really enjoy it. So thank you. Um, now the quote, getting to the quote. <laughs> God, I hope it's worth it. I hope I haven't said it on another episode. <laughs> it's going to be really <laughs> shit if I have. Oh no, I've built it up too much too. And look, I'm probably paraphrasing here a little, but it's from Grit. It's from Grit. By Angela Duckworth. By Angela Duckworth. One of my all-time favourite books. And it's on the psychology you, you didn't and get, the You science. didn't finish that book, did you? What do you mean I didn't finish it? <laughs> How does that mean? What does that, that even mean? It's a joke because, like, grit, <laughs> the book is about, like, sticking with things. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? <laughs> my God. I'm like, Rafa, you like paying me out? Wow, Ralph's like, really, seriously <laughs> The cake and coffee before podcast is not going to happen again. I'll tell you that for free. Now, here we go. <laughs> I'm moving on. Grit. Grit, which is about <laughs> – it's about grit. It's about <laughs> – oh, my God. The science of what makes you persevere. Mm. Yeah. And and gritty people – uh, it's really <laughs> gritty people are awesome people. And I think a lot of you that are listening to this will be gritty people because you're our kind of people. Well, if you've got to like 54 and a half minutes <laughs> on episode 29, I think we're on. Yeah, good on you. You're awesome. Look at that. That's you. Re- when you say you're going to do a thing, you do a damn thing. You know, you're awesome. 
<laughs> hey, and while you're at it, five stars on yeah. five stars on Google review for us on yeah. on and, Apple Podcasts. And, should, and whoever wrote that review that said, "Here's your stars, you stars." Do you know who that was? I suspect She's it might have been Jordana. Martin. It was Jordana. Yeah. Shout out Jordana. Planner Lattes. We love so, Jordana. Um, everybody else who hasn't written a review yet, <laughs> now it's your turn. Now it's your turn. Yeah, I love that. I love when she was like, "Here's your stars, your stars." <laughs> Thanks, Jordana. We love you. Um, oh God, I haven't got to the so quote what's the, yet. What's the freaking quote? <laughs> You've built it up a lot. No, I'm it better over be good. It now. <laughs> I can't remember it. No. So basically, and this, <laughs> I had this quote embedded into. It's embedded the right word. Put into the O Week lecture for our for our new students intake on the weekend, and it's really resonated. And they've actually a few of them have reposted it. So it's it's hitting it's hitting home. <laughs> Raph looks if you guys could see Raph right now, the level of anticipation on his face is it's palpable. Well when you say the word embedded, it it's not right. makes it's not me right think word. like you kind of like surreptitiously <laughs> kind of put it in in a kind of like a what was that, you know, um, advertising where they just flash the advert on the screen for one <laughs> One frame, so it's, uh, you don't remember, even consciously <laughs> recognise that you've seen the ad. You just all of a sudden start thinking, gee, I feel like a Snickers bar, you know. <laughs> I just ate my microphone, so who knows? Am I <laughs> so okay. that, is that what you did? No, you I didn't. It? No, I, it's an actual slide. Okay. We just, the, the, <laughs> the coin is there on a slide. So it's not embedded. That's not correct. Added to. Um, okay, the quote. <sighs> <laughs> I've ruined it now. <laughs> it, look, basically, nobody wants to show you the hours and hours of becoming. They want to show you what they've become. Yeah. Um, f- where? What was it? Um, <laughs> okay. Where talent um, counts, actually, doing the thing counts twice. Yeah. So you've got to do the work. But also, like, show the hours of becoming. Show that part of the journey. You know, our, our life is not just the highlight reel. Mm. Our life is not the the shiny certificate and crown at the end of it. It's, mm. you know, it's it's – and it, you will inspire others. And if this is a culture that we're trying to – squash you know the the bully that pulls that gets pleasure out of pulling wings off flies like let's just fill it with so much freaking love and inspiration and, and body positivity and and and, and, and fearless movement and yeah. like just joy in in creating something yeah. you know new yeah um i think there is there are some i think um just in terms of uh like f- creating you know making that easier for yourself to do um i think you know i i often think about the the research that says basically in a lot of domains of life you know you are the average of your five the five people you hang around with the most you know if we look at success income education body weight whatever it's like show me the five people you spend the most time with average them out that's probably going to be you know pretty close to what you achieve in that domain and you know it's not true all times for all people but it's you know it, it's it's a thing and um so surround yourself on social media not with people who show their perfect fucking you know sculpted you know elegant photos only but like there are some really awesome people who are in fact really good at the thing that they do who also you know valorize and 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 and, and make hero shots of like oh here's my before and after transformation that took one minute and here's like the before shot is me poking my tummy out and standing with a stooped posture and then the after shot is me sucking it in with a different light and the, the tan yeah. Yeah. tan does wonders I tell you what yeah. this is my one minute <laughs> if trans- I ever want to be the, the after photo I just make sure I put my tan on one minute transformation <laughs> or here's, 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 the, here's me failing on this exercise or you know <laughs> overbalancing in teaser or whatever and and, and I think, you know, surround yourself with people who normalise making mistakes along the way and, you know, not getting caught from perfect angles all the time and stuff. And and the more you surround yourself with those people, the more you will 
that will kind of seep into who you are and how you see the world and that'll be normalized for you. Um, and, you know, and just like hang out with people who are like that and people who aren't like that, just unfollow them. Unfollow, just don't, don't feed yourself that diet of perfection. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not healthy. Mm. Yeah. Good talk. Really good talk. Mm. Hey, um, we've talked, all right, so we talked about form, but well, all right, so we talked about like how what we do, the cult of scientism. <laughs> What's the is, definition of cult, just out of curiosity? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Chuck it in we your Google. Look it up. Chuck it, chuck um, it in your we Google. Talked I'm just about, curious. Um, A cult is a system of religious veneration and devotion directed towards a particular figure or object or a person or thing that is popular or fashionable among a particular group or section of society. I don't think it really suits what we're doing. It doesn't really fit with what we're doing, does it? This is according to Wikipedia. In modern English, a cult is a social group that is defined by its unusual religious, spiritual or philosophical beliefs or by its common interest in a particular personality, object or goal. Yeah. So, um, we, we help people move fearlessly and think critically. Yeah. We're the cult of the cult, the fearless cult of, movement and critical thinking. The cult of fearless movement. <laughs> cool. Make, make we can get special robes made. Mm. <laughs> um, so anyway, I think that you know the 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 difference between what we do and saying like, hey, here's how we think you know you should live your life if you're an instructor. I think what's different there is, and what we said is like, well, we're actually making factual claims about how the world works based on scientific evidence, and the foundational assumption is that it's it's an it's a moral obligation for us as professionals to avoid any reasonably foreseeable harm and to give our clients the best possible care, right? And what could be more ethical than giving people the currently known best practice, you know, the thing that's known to be most effective and avoiding those things which are known to be ineffective or harmful? You know, what could be more ethical than that? Mm. So that's what, we're, you know, that's what, we're, that's what we're about. And I think that's what distinguishes us from folk who are out there telling people they're doing their teasers wrong. And the folk who are doing, telling people they're doing their teasers wrong, they seem to be probably on a spectrum. At one end of the fuckwits who are just basically pulling the wings <laughs> off flies, right? And that's how they get their kicks. Yeah, you know, it's really I, scary. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, those people are you know, probably beyond redemption. Mm. And so the best, the best your response is just you totally ignore them. And if they, if they, you know, if if you if you don't feed them, they're more likely to go away and pick on someone else. And if they don't go away, then probably you know responding to them is not going to change anything they do. Mm. But you, what you're responding to is the people who are sitting silently on the sidelines and wondering, like scratching their heads, going, "Huh, is this? Oh, so is this what the cool kids do? Is it pick on people? Oh, maybe I should follow the cool kids." But then if they see you take the moral high ground and rebut with facts, if you have facts. Or just rebut by just taking moral high ground, just like literally send them the Arnold quote. You know that that it's not for the person that you're directly addressing, though. It's for the silent non-commenters, right? Um, and then just like just block and fucking ignore the shit out of people. Just like can't you know just block them, delete them, unfriend them, unfollow them. Just just pretend they don't exist. Make them not exist because you can do that on social media real easily. So why subject yourself to that? Um, and then, you know, and I just don't read the comments myself. And and I do try and feed myself a diet, and I, this is what I recommend, is that if, if you feed yourself a diet of people who are real and who are, you know, ethical and genuine and who are cool and out there doing cool shit and being awesome and sometimes showing you how they fall flat on their ass and the bits of them jiggle or whatever, and then they get up and be awesome again. You know, follow people like that and unfollow people who make you feel bad about yourself. Whether the people make you feel bad about yourself intentionally or whether they just do it by being freaking supposedly perfect and then you self-compare and go, oh, no, that person's way more perfect. They're not fucking perfect. They're just showing you their curated one in ten No one's perfect, you guys. No one's perfect. That they, you know, they restage that shot 48 times 
you know, to get the only millisecond when they were doing the exercise perfectly or whatever. It's like, no, or they know this, there's one exercise they can do brilliantly and they did that exercise. Or they happen to be one with freak genetics that they can do the splits without ever stretching or whatever. It's like, just if, if watching that person makes you feel bad, just don't watch them, unfollow them. Yeah, and then go out and create something in the world and, and you know, feel proud of yourself for creating something. Love it. Yeah, love Good it. Talk. Thanks, Raf.